this is a model that I use for performance testing a lot. Might be kind of ugly, but it's uh, one of the ways in which we can uh, determine uh, whether we're improving it in terms of our performance. There's a lot of star points. There's a lot of symmetry here. And one of the things that we did was, um, I'm gonna pick this loop of uh, faces, go into the edit form command, and then begin to modify it. And honestly, we've made performance improvements, but it's really still, when you have this many star points, it's still a challenge to get this to move quickly. So the change that we've made, now I did an okay and I can undo that. Like we were talking about before. But now I'm gonna go over to, uh, under the modify, you'll see enable better performance. When I select it, get a little warning down in the corner saying I'm switching to faster performance mode. And the reason we, we give you a warning about this is because now in the area of the star points, the highlights, and in fact, if we were to use um, zebra stripes on here, would indicate that there is only tan or, uh, positional continuity here. Um, the trade-off is that now we're able to pick a very complex model and now when we make modifications here, it goes much faster. So in order to improve the uh, performance, we're uh, making some compromises in terms of the display, but it seems like a good trade-off. And once you've done that, you can always uh, keep in that mode or you can take it back to enable better display. And you'll notice right here, it's going to snap back into uh, tangent continuity around those star points. There we go. So that's something if, if you're working with very complex models, you want to be able to take advantage of. So one thing that we've added uh, in terms of being able to make it easier to work with your, your model. Um, right now, if I was to make a selection, uh, my selection filter up here is set for everything. And because I have this uh, clamp mechanism and I want to work on the T-spline body, every time I make a selection, I could easily be picking something that I don't want to. So what I can do now is I'm, I'm notice I'm also as I highlight, you can see these um, components in the background. I'm going to select here, do a shift select to pick all of these. There to here. Okay. Let's try that again. Well, I, I'm just going to select them individually and say so unselectable. You notice you get a little badge on that. And each time, actually I'm getting some um, naming problems right here, but I think it's going to probably still work. So I can make them unselectable. As I make it unselectable, it means that now as I do some editing, and now when I go in here and pick uh, these T-spline faces, nothing else is, is selected. So it gives you the opportunity to be able to do editing, have reference geometry in the background, and not select it. So here I can um, go into edit form, pick a couple of these, um, actually do some scaling. This is a chance to use the reorient. Reorient uh, allows me to change where my point of rotation or scaling is. Once I've got it in the position I want, then I can scale this down and all of my selections are going to be uh, just on the T-spline object and not in any of the background. Another thing that you can do to help uh, visualize uh, with this as well is that this becomes the, uh, the uh, active object. I could also go back in here into this cover, select it and change the opacity on it. That can be useful to be able to see the background object as you're editing the T-spline over the top of it. So that's the selectable and unselectable. Uh, we've actually done some things to the T-spline uh, so that we can use it in, in uh, for sketches. So if I create a sketch here, uh, I'm gonna use this 
plane as the target and I can go in and do a project. With that I can do a project of this edge and I can make these sketches visible. Then we can see it right there. You can also, uh, if I stop that sketch, you can also create a sketch and uh, this time do a project cut edges. So I'm going to create, this is my sketch plane and then do the uh, project cut edges on this T-spline object right here. And that one right, and we'll pick a new one, create a sketch on this plane. There we go. And then I can do a projects. There we go. So now I've made a cross section on that um, sketch plane using a T-spline. So I can project and create uh, a projected cross section as well. Now let's just take a quick look here at uh, applying materials. Um, here's a an example. We'll make it uh, active so that it's clearly seen. And in the case where I want to be able to apply materials, I can either select them within the browser individually, or I can I select them after bringing up the materials. The materials are available from the modify dropdown here. You can also get to them from the marking menu. And if I bring up the material browser here, now I can make selections. And as I select something, it highlights around the boundary every time I uh, select it again, it unselects it. So in this case, if I wanted to change the selection of the wood that's on here, I could go into the Autodesk library where we have a series of different kinds of woods. You can also, uh, so I'm gonna switch this over to a solid dark cherry. When I wanna assign that right hand mouse button, assign to selection. You can also create libraries of your own. If you go down here, You'll see that there's an opening existing or create a new library. I've actually created uh, uh, some libraries or I can create one right now by going in and saying create a new library. It's going to bring up a browser and this is going to be for my chair. And now it's easy enough to just go into my woods. Uh, I'm going to try this one. I can add it to the chair. Uh, I could go in and also pick a fabric like a uh, caning and let's uh, add that to my chair. And now if I go into that library here, see I've got these two materials. Again, things are selected. If I now deselect these items and I'm going to select this seat and I can apply that uh, assign that to the selection. This is also the place when you have added things to a library or uh, send it to your favorites library. By double clicking here you can bring up a uh, menu that will allow you to modify the selections. So this brings up um, an editor and I select this add to favorites and edit. Uh, it gives you access to the uh, texture in this case, it has a texture or to the scaling of that texture. I can make a modification, make this smaller. And when I completed that, oops, let's take that 10, done. Now I've made a, a finer material there and I can say, okay. And what it's uh, asking is whether I wanna keep the original or replace it. I'm going to, in this case, keep both of them. If I were to go into my favorites uh, directory, I'd have both the original and an, um, an, another copy of it with the finer texture applied to it. So I, I think that covers most of the issues for uh, updates to Sculpt. Uh, we're continuing to do improvements uh, and uh, really appreciate your feedback. We've been uh, active in trying to uh, respond to it. I hope these have been some useful things. Will, I think you can take it back if you want.